Lesson 1.3, Properties of Real Numbers. These properties hold true for all real numbers. These include natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. So what's a property? A property is defined as an attribute, quality, or characteristic of something. When we talk about the properties of the number, we're talking about calculations or operations that are always true for these types of numbers, no matter what the numbers are. There are many properties of numbers that apply to specific sets of numbers or specific operations. In this module, we're just going to discuss a few properties. Commutative, associative, distributive, identity, inverse, and transitive. The commutative property is a property that says that we can swap numbers around and you still get the same answer when you add or when you multiply. In math, it's expressed as a plus b is equal to b plus a, or a times b is equal to b times a. If I want to add 2 and 3, does it matter if I say 2 plus 3 or if I say 3 plus 2? Or if I want to multiply 2 and 3, does it matter if I say 2 times 3 or 3 times 2? Now, no matter what order we add or multiply two real numbers, we'll always get the same answer. 2 plus 3 is always going to be 5. Whether we say 2 plus 3 or 3 plus 2, likewise 2 times 3 is always going to be 6, whether it's 2 times 3 or 3 times 2. The associative property says that it doesn't matter how we group the numbers when we add or how we group the numbers when we multiply. If you think of the word associative, that comes from the word association. An association is a group. It does not negate the order of operations. The associative property deals with addition or multiplication only. Operations don't mix. So if I have only addition, it doesn't matter which groups I do first. Or if I have only multiplication, it doesn't matter which group I do first. In math, we express it as a plus b in parentheses plus c. So this would be a group. Or we can have A and we can add the group B plus C first. No matter how we do this, we're going to get the same answer. Likewise, if I group A and B together with multiplication, so I multiply A and B first and then multiply times C, that doesn't matter. It won't change the order if I or the answer if I say A times B times C and I've multiplied that first. So if I want to add 3, 5, and 4 together, does it matter which two I add first? Sorry about that. So let's try it. If I have 3 plus 4 plus 5, and I add 3 and 4 together first, or 4 and 5 together first, this is 7 plus 5, this is 3 plus 9, and they both equal 12. The distributive property. First, let's think about what it means to be distribution. What does it mean to distribute? If I'm passing out or distributing flyers, I'm going to give a flyer to every single person. So distribute is to pass out evenly or give to something evenly. And the distributive property says that multiplying a number by a group of numbers added together is the same as doing each multiplication separately. So I can have a times b plus c. That's the same thing as a times b plus a times c. It doesn't matter if the operation in parentheses is addition or subtraction. So this could be b minus c. 
would give me the same result. So for example, 5 times 3 plus 2. Well, if I use the order of operations, I have 5 times 5, which gives me 25. If I use the distributive property, I say 5 times 3, and 5 times 2, and that gives me 15 plus 10, which gives me 25. Same result. There are two properties of identity. If you think about what is an identity, identity is who we are. That doesn't change. Our identity remains the same. That's the same with numbers. We have the additive identity property and the multiplicative identity property. The additive identity is the number that can be added to any number without changing the value. That number is zero. The additive identity property tells us that we can add the additive identity, 0, to any number and it will not change the value or identity of the number. The multiplicative identity is the number that can be multiplied to any number without changing the value. That's number 1. And the multiplicative identity property tells us that we can multiply the multiplicative identity, which is 1, to any number and it will not change the value of the number. a times 1 will still be a. Well, if we have an identity property, we also have an inverse property. Inverse means opposite. The inverse of a number is the number that will give us the identity when we add or multiply. So if the additive identity is 0, the inverse is the number that will give us the 0. So the additive inverse property or the multiplicative inverse property. The additive inverse is the number that can be added to any number that will give us the additive identity. This will be the opposite of the number. So an additive inverse, there's not a single additive inverse. With the additive identity, we had 0. And that's the only one. With the additive inverse, it will depend on what number we're working with for us to determine what the inverse of that number is. So if our number is a, the additive inverse is going to be negative a. The additive inverse property tells us that we can add the additive inverse to the number and it will give us 0. So a plus negative a will always equal 0. The multiplicative inverse is the number that can be multiplied to a number that will give us the multiplicative identity, which is going to be a 1. Instead of an opposite, this time we're looking for the reciprocal of the number, so 1 over a. The multiplicative inverse property tells us that we can multiply the multiplicative inverse to any number, and it will give us the multiplicative identity. a times 1 over a will equal 1. Transitive property. The word transitive means transi transition. Transitive property is a property of equality or inequality. So when we talk about equality and inequality, we're using these symbols. The transitive property says that if A equals B and B equals C, then A will equal C. Basically, with transitive property, what we do is we cut out the middleman. It's called the transitive, transitive property because we transition from A through B and then to C. So like I said, we're taking out the middleman and going straight from A to C. So some examples, if 2 plus 3 is 5 and 5 is 4 plus 1, then 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 plus 1. Oh. Typo, sorry about that, 4 plus 1. We take out the 5, and we get 2 plus 3 equals 4 plus 1. Likewise with multiplication, 
5 times 6 equals 30, and 30 equals 2 times 15, and then 5 times 6 equals 2 times 15. We can take out the 30. Now this will also work with an inequality. If I said something like 2 plus 3 is less than or equal to, right, 3, okay, 2 plus 5 is less than or equal to 8, and 8 is less than or equal to 6 plus 9. Well, I can take out this middle 8, and I get 2 plus 5 is less than or equal to 6 plus 9. That's 7, that's 15, still true. Okay, the next step in knowing the properties of numbers is to be able to identify them when we see them. So this one is actually a little confusing sometimes because it has parentheses in it. And when we see parentheses, we want to think grouping. But what you want to look at is what moved. Did the parentheses move and the numbers stayed in the same order or did the numbers change orders? Here I have an 8 plus 5x plus 10 equals 5x plus 10 plus 8. These switched positions, that gives us the commutative property. 5 plus negative 5 equals 0. 0 is our additive in identity. 5 and negative 5 are going to be additive inverses. 5 times 4 times 8, in parentheses, this is a group is equal to 5 times 4, a group, times 8. What we did is we changed the group. That makes it the associative property. 13 plus 11x times z is equal to 13z plus 11xz. So what happened is this z got multiplied by 13 and by 11x. That's the distributive property. 2x plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 2x. What happened here was a switching of places. Anytime we have a switching of places, that's commutative property. 12x times 2 times 5y is equal to 12x times 5y times 2. Again, we switched places, and that gives us not associative property. Typo again, excuse me for that. Commutative property. If x equals 3 and 3 equals y, then x equals y. Whenever you look here and you have 3 and 3 or any number and another number or any letter and the same, this identification here, and then if you were to take that out, you get this statement, then you know you have transitive property. 6 times 1 divided by 6 equals 1. This is an inverse, so we have a multiplicative inverse. 7 plus 13 plus 21 is equal to 7 plus 13 plus 21. The thing that moved were the parentheses, so associative property. 5 plus 0 equals 5, additive identity. And the order does not affect a sum order. That's when we switch the order around, therefore commutative property.